The summer movie season has already started. Thor is crashing theaters near you, and Fast Five is crashing even louder, and the other theaters not showing Thor near you. And this summer promises to have lots of sequels and lots of superheroes. For example, we get the Green Lantern, we get Captain America, we get a new X-Men, we get a new Transformers, we get a new Spy Kids, we get a new Planet of the Apes, we get a new Final Destination, we get the last Harry Potter, and we get Conan in 3D. Well, there are some movies that could be sleepers that you don't want to miss, that look like they're going to be pretty good, maybe even some Oscar contenders, and we want to tell you about them here before your multiplexes are taken over by the big Hollywood blockbusters. The first movie is called Beginners. It stars Ewan McGregor, and he's a guy who discovers his new love, who's played by Melanie Laurent. You might remember her from Inglorious Bastard. She's the woman that owned the movie theater, French actress. And as he's falling in love with this woman, he finds out that his father, played by Christopher Plummer, has terminal cancer, and he also is gay. He comes out of the closet at the age of 75. Well, obviously there's drama uh, afoot here, and the movie was directed by Mike Mills, who did a very odd film a few years ago called Thumbsucker. So that's one to look out for, and already there's some Oscar buzz on that for the acting. The next movie I want to talk about is called A Better Life. This is, features a cast of unknowns, and it's directed by Chris Weitz, who did one of the Twilight movies, and he's also one of the guys that created the American Pie series. And as I said, there's no-name cast, and the movie involves a uh, gardener in Los Angeles who dodges gangsters and immigration agents as he meets uh, all the people that he does lawn work for. And it's supposed to be a very interesting dissection of the immigrant experience in Los Angeles and early word is quite high on that one as well and it's a real change of pace for Chris Weiss who's done bigger films like Twilight lately and he also did The Golden Compass. The next film uh, is called The Future and this is from Miranda July. A few years ago she gave us a very quirky independent film called Me and You and Everyone We Know and uh, it was really a delight. It was very unusual, very refreshing and she acts, stars, and directed this film as well as the other one. And here she plays uh, one half of a bohemian couple who would adopt a cat and then unusual things happen to them. And uh, you can expect some magic realism in this film, some offbeat laughs, and I have a really good feeling about this one when it showed at Sundance. It got very strong uh, positive reaction uh, on a totally different planet almost. It's called The Devil's Double. And this movie is actually based on a book uh, by the person that the film is about. It's about the guy that was chosen, well basically enlisted, to become the double of Saddam Hussein's deranged son. And it's all about his experience. Uh, actor Dominic Cooper plays both parts. He plays uh, Hussein's son and he plays the actor and I have a, a good feeling that this film is going to be really powerful and uh, qu quite uh, unusual in some ways. And it's directed by Lee Tamahori, who is a New Zealand director who's best known for his early work, Once Were Warriors, and he also directed the James Bond film, Die Another Day. Another movie uh, that I recommend, and actually I've seen this one, is called The Debt. The film's been in the can for a little while because there were some distribution problems, but uh, I think this one's going to be a sleeper. It stars the great Helen Mirren, and she plays a Mossad agent who decides to come out of retirement to find the Nazi that escaped her 30 years uh, previously uh, while she was involved with Mossad. And uh, this movie was directed by John Madden, who did Shakespeare in Love, and it's an action film. It's uh, intriguing. Uh, it's, a, it's a good old-fashioned political thriller, and I think people will uh, enjoy this as well. The film Submarine is a British film uh, that can best be described as uh, the Wes Anderson film Rushmore in Wales. It's a coming-of-age film about a 15-year-old kid who doesn't quite know 
uh, how to make it with girls, and at the same time, he's dealing with um, his mother's boyfriend, uh, who he does not like, and his mother's played by Sally Hawkins, the great British actress. So uh, I would say submarine. It's not about a submarine, but that uh, obviously is metaphorical in this sense. Um, and it is directed by a, uh, a guy named Richard Ayonde. I think that's how you say his name. And he was part of the cast of the It Crowd. That was a big cult uh, TV series from England. And last but certainly not least is a new film from Terrence Malick. Any year that gives us a Terrence Malick film obviously is a special year because the filmmaker certainly doesn't make many movies. His last movie was The New World, and prior to that he did The Thin Red Line, the all-star war movie, and before that he hadn't made a movie in several decades. Well, this time with Tree of Life, he gives us a movie with both Sean Penn and Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt plays Sean Penn's father, However, they're in different time periods. I believe Pitt, uh, Pitt stuff is set in the 1950s. Penn is contemporary. We're not 100% sure what the movie is about because Malick won't tell us, but we do know there are dinosaurs in it. And we do know there's some sort of a existential crisis, and I believe it is set in Texas. I mean, these are all things that we've gleaned from various sources, but we're not sure. So will it be metaphysical mumbo jumbo? or will it be a brilliant masterpiece and up for several Oscar nominations? Well, we'll have to wait because the movie will be rolling out in the next couple weeks. So there we have it. In between the sequels, the reboots, and the superhero movies, there are obviously some other types of movies worth seeking out. So find some time in between going to the multiplex, maybe check out the art house or the theater that's showing these movies, and you will find that without the big special effects, there might be something more in the theaters this summer. This is Movie Earth, signing off.